Mr. Bob's Railroad Workbench. I'm Bob Lettenberger, Mr. Bob, Education Director for the National Railroad Museum. And this is Mr. Bob's Railroad Workbench where we talk about math, science, history, trains, and do it with all kinds of fun activities. If you're watching us on Facebook Live this afternoon and have a question, feel free to type that in. We'll answer questions after the segment today. If you would like to just type in and let us know who you are and where you're viewing us from, that'd be great too. Also, while on Facebook, make sure that you like the National Railroad Museum's page. Well, a little walk through history in the collection of the National Railroad Museum this afternoon. One of the questions we often get asked is the age of some of our equipment. And so this afternoon, I'd like to talk to you about the oldest locomotive in the museum's collection, Lake Superior and Ishpeming, number 24. You see LSNI 24 here on the National Railroad Museum's track back in 1964. And yes, back then it actually did pull our train under its own power. That is our depot building that still stands today. Today that building houses the Jody Lenfesty Children's Discovery Depot. Now, the Lake Superior and Ishpeming Railroad ran and still does run in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. You see a map of the railroad here. It's a short line that mainly carried iron ore there in the Upper Peninsula. The LSNI did move some passenger traffic throughout its history as well. Now, our piece, number 24, built by the American Locomotive Company in 1910, actually started out as number 40, and it was constructed for a subsidiary of the LSNI. But that's not the interesting thing that we want to talk about on this locomotive today. If you notice number 24, it seems as if there is a bit of space between the boiler and the wheels that you can look through and see what's going on on the other side. The story goes something like this. In 1931, the LSNI, whether they could not afford or did not want to order new locomotives, needed to get some more power out of number 24. So they took it into their shops to overhaul it. And one of the things that they did was raise the boiler up off of the frame, allowing the firebox to be widened out, increasing the grate area or the floor of the firebox, allowing a bigger fire, more steam, and a more powerful locomotive. Early American locomotives, the firebox was housed down between the driving wheels, which very much so limited the space that was available for this particular part of a steam locomotive, and also limited the fire and hence the steaming power of a particular machine. If you look as locomotives developed and that boiler was raised, you see the firebox was widened out almost as wide as the locomotive, allowing for more great area, more fire, and more powerful locomotives. So when you stop by the National Railroad Museum, wander out to the McCormick Train Pavilion. Way on the east end, you're going to find number 24. And when you look at it, it'll appear that the boiler is standing up on stilts. And now you know why, because you'll also see that much wider firebox on number 24, our oldest locomotive. You know, at the National Railroad Museum, it's our mission to inspire lifelong learning by providing dynamic educational opportunities through the preservation of railroad objects, engaging exhibits, and innovative programs. As a nonprofit organization, we're supported by both public and private donations and by our museum members. If you'd like more information on how you can support the National Railroad Museum or to learn how you can become a museum member, visit our website, nationalrrmuseum.org. Hey, I'm Mr. Bob, and thanks for stopping by Mr. Bob's Railroad Workbench. We'll see you again real soon.